vision slowly recovers. The smell of ozone fills my nostrils. Sasua takes a deep breath and unfastens her seatbelts. We're here. Dots. I gulp for air. Did I really just travel through time? If so, then this is July 28th. The day Karisu and I first met. The day I sent the first email. The day it all began. Susua takes out a digital watch. It's a fairly old-fashioned design. I bought it in 1975, but it's not even three years old yet. This is where an uninformed person would say, In Japanese, please. Susua sets the watch to the correct time, then hands it to me. The display reads 11.51. Nakabashi's presentation starts at 12. Let's do this. You keep an eye on Makisu Kurisu and stop whoever tries to kill her. And you? I'll back you up. Also, remember how I took away your phone? The U of July 28th is here too, meaning there are currently two Okabe Rintaros in this world. Whatever you do, don't let your past self see you. It could cause a major time paradox. But Teeter said that couldn't happen. That was a lie. Misinformation. Kinda think of it. Alpha Sasua said the stuff she posted about the Many Worlds interpretation was a fake too. Got it. Now let's go. We'll, ra bleh, we'll rendezvous at the time machine when it's over. Sasua finishes her rushed explanation and motions me towards the hatch. I open the hatch and grab the rim. I squeeze my way out. Sasua crawls out after me and closes the hatch. You hide! I'll provide a distraction! Sasua runs up to the emergency door, because now everybody's going to come rushing onto the rooftops. And then, to my astonishment, she draws her gun and fires at the doorknob. The door opens easily, and must have broken the lock. In a minute now, a crowd of people will run up these stairs to see what happens. My past self will be among them. I need to hide before they get here. That was a close one. I nearly bumped into myself on the 8th floor landing. Right after I ran downstairs to the 7th floor, I heard footsteps running at the other way behind me. Those footsteps were mine, no doubt. It was a near miss. To be safe, I descend to the 4th floor before stopping to take a breath. I take a look around, but there's nobody paying attention to me. I wonder what Sasua is doing. I'm worried, but I need to focus on my own mission. I must prevent Karisu's death. In about 30 minutes from now, just after Nakabashi's presentation ends, Someone will murder her. I know where it happens. In the 8th floor hallway, towards the back of the building, where people rarely go. What I don't know is who stabbed her. Instead of running around and drawing attention to myself, I should just wait at the scene. Let's cool off here for about 5 minutes and then head over there. If I remember correctly, Carissa tried to talk to me in the assembly hall, but I blew her off and came down here. After that, I tried calling Mayuri, but... Her phone was off, and I couldn't get through, so I went back up to the assembly hall to find her. What time was that? I searched my memories, trying to plot the actions I took on July 28th. It sounded simple when Susua said it, but staying away from my past self is going to take more work than I thought. Frustration mounts. I shove Susua's watch into my pocket to quash it. Just then... Excuse me... Mm, exclamation point question mark that voice is that Kurisu or is that Miyuri no that's not Miyuri that couldn't be that is somebody who doesn't know us so it's Kurisu I turn around Kurisu uh do I know you N no you came down from the roof just now didn't you of course this is why, in the beginning of the game, in the first episode we did, she was, like, acting like... She was asking, like, why were you so scared before? Or it was something like that, and we didn't understand it, but she's talking about this Okube, because this Okube makes her go and talk to the other Okube, makes her seek us out, and it all comes together! She looks at me with those beautiful eyes. Eyes shining with intelligence and strength of will. I thought I would never see her again, but now, now, before my very eyes, is the girl I love. Tears swell up in my eyes. I want to embrace her right this instant. 
It takes everything I have to resist the urge. Don't forget, this is our first meeting. This Carizo doesn't know me. I heard a strange sound from the roof. Is that what the building shook just now? What's going on? It's not Dr. Nakabashi's doing, is it? Why did I have to run into Carizo of all people? Well, you already have run into her, if you think back. Dots. I can't answer. I'm afraid that if I speak, I'll be unable to contain my emotions. The memory of her last smile is burned into my mind, imploring me to act. Are you listening? You're sweating like crazy. Carizo looks at me with suspicion. What would happen if I were to grab Carizo and run? Would divergence change? Would her murder be averted? I recall all the times Mayuri died. I recall all the times I time leaped to save her. Everything I try ended in vain. I was unable to save her even once. No matter what I did, the world itself killed her. Won't it be the same with Karisu? Should I even try? I reached towards Karisu, my hand shaking. Hey! She steps back in surprise and fear, clutching a manila envelope to her chest. This is our first meeting, I know that. But to me, she's still the girl I love. If I'd been thinking straight a second ago, I would have realized that my plan to grab her and flee wasn't going to work. Karisu would never follow some strange man she only just met. Running isn't an option. All I can do is wait at the scene of the crime. Fighting against the urge to stay, I force myself to turn and leave. Please answer my question! But Carissa pursues me. Why is she so desperate to know who I am? I do look suspicious, I'll admit that. What kind of envelope is she holding, though? But if she thinks I'm dangerous, why would she come alone? I turn around reluctantly and meet Carissa's stare. Answer me! Dots. Can I... Can I really save you? The words catch in my throat. Can I save her? I don't know. All I know is that convergence is merciless and cruel, and that I am powerless to stop it. Can you... what? Dots. I shake my head, then bolt for the stairs before Carissa can react. W wait Stop! And that's why she seeks us out. During the first episode, when I make it back to the 8th floor, the presentation has already started. I peek in through the door of the assembly hall. Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud, that's who! Someone in the audience hall is shouting at Dr. Nakabashi. And that someone is me. Now I remember. I, confr I confronted Dr. Nakabashi in the middle of his presentation. I called him a fraud for ripping off John Teeter's posts. From this angle, I look like a real asshole. Someone... I forgot that that guy actually has a voice, for some reason. Someone throw that man out! Staff members approach. Damn, this is embarrassing. But there's nothing I can do here. I need to leave before Karisu appears. So he... essentially starts. He's part of starting World War III, which is crazy. I turn around and head deeper into the dim passage. An image flashes through my mind. She was lying there, at the end of this passage, in a puddle of her own blood. Who would have a reason to kill her? Twenty minutes from now, that's exactly what will happen. Can I prevent it? I must. Whatever it takes. There's a pile of junk. Toolboxes, cardboard and the like, about halfway down the passage. The perfect hiding spot. I crouch behind them. Now all I have to do is wait for Carissa to show. But what will I do when she does? Only now they realize that I'm completely unarmed. I really didn't think this through. Carissa was lying in a pool of blood. That means her killer had a weapon. Since I didn't hear a gunshot, it must have been a knife or something similar. How am I going to defend her? And myself? Is there anything around here that might work as a weapon? I still have about 20 minutes. But one wrong move and someone might catch me. I shouldn't leave this spot. Maybe I'm being overly cautious, but this is my only chance to prevent Carisu's death. I don't want to jeopardize that. I don't know what I'd do if I ran into Carisu again. It's a miracle that I managed to tear myself away the last time. 
<sighs> the longer I wait in the darkness, the harder it becomes. The anticipation is killing me. So far, not a single soul has passed down this hallway. I can faintly hear Nakabashi's voice through the mic from far away, but that's it. The silence does nothing but increase my tension. To make matters worse, it's hot and humid. I guess the air conditioner's not on, not on back here. My entire body's drenched in sweat, and I haven't even been hiding for a minute. Sweat drips from my brow to the floor. I rub it out with my shoe. I have to keep waiting. There's no other choice. I stay there, crouched in the darkness for what seems an eternity. Although you don't have to worry too much about being seen by your former self, because technically you've already experienced this and you didn't run into yourself, so there's no way you could run into yourself. Right? But still, I just, I, uh, this, I don't, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I stay there, crouched in the darkness for what seems an eternity. In the distance, I hear the sound of sparse applause. I glance at Susu's watch. It's 12.26. I guess the presentation's over. I peek out from behind the boxes, and just then... I hear footsteps approaching. I quickly duck back behind cover. My heart is pounding. Someone's coming this way. Who? Is it Carizu's murderer? I clench my teeth and try to drive away the tension. But then again, is, since we're experiencing, we've experienced this before and Carizu dies where we experienced it, can we really change that though? How, is, how does that work? I mean, can we really just fight convergence now? I can only pray that I won't be found. Finally, the footsteps pass right by my hiding spot. Take a peek. Who is it? Moving only my eyes, I sneak a glance at the person. Dots. Oh, sorry. Dots. Kurisu? There's no one with her. I didn't expect Kurisu to be the first to appear. What is she doing back here? This area is for employees only. Now that I think about it, Kurisu's murder made no sense. Why was she killed in a place she would normally never come? Carefully keep quiet, I watch Kurisu from the shadows. Is she gonna hand that envelope to somebody? About five meters down the hall, she stops walking and leans against the wall. She's holding that manila envelope I saw her with earlier. She peeks inside and smiles softly. Why is she smiling? Carissa rarely smiles like that. I mean, it's more like her to glare at people. That envelope. I search my memories again. When Carissa approached me during Nakabarsh's presentation, I'm pretty sure she was holding that envelope. But she... But did she have it when I discovered her body? I don't remember seeing it. What could be inside to make Risu smile like that? I can't begin to imagine. Carisu hasn't moved a muscle. She's just standing there, head hung, her face hidden behind her long hair. I can't read her expression. Is she waiting for someone? Who? Who would she meet in a place like this? That's when I hear another set of footsteps approaching. I can't see who it is from where I'm hiding. But given the timing, it has to be the person who killed Kurisu. And as proof, Kurisu raises her head, and upon recognizing the newcomer, lifts her back off the wall. Her expression softens slightly. The footsteps come even closer. Who is it? I wanted to talk. Kurisu suddenly starts speaking. The footsteps pass right by my hiding spot. I'm so tense, I can't move a muscle. My heart is beating, this is exciting. The newcomer finally appears in my narrow field of vision. And it's... Dots. Dots? Dr. Nakabashi! I slap a hand over my mouth to keep from shouting in astonishment. Kurisu and Dr. Nakabashi know each other? Oh, one more thing. Watch out for Dr. Nakabashi. Something else occurs to me. Why would Kurisu, an accomplished scientist, attend a presentation of a man like Nakabashi? He's just a two-bit inventor. Only 15 people came to hear him speak. That's including trolls like me. There wasn't even any press coverage. 
Besides, Kurisu hates time travel science. That much was obvious from a lecture at ATF. In that case, it's obvious why she's here. She didn't come to see his presentation. She came to see him. But why? What could be the connection? This is uh, this is such a crazy theory. I'm probably wrong, but is there any chance that that's her father? Is it? Wait. It can't be. Dots. Yes, I was correct. But you're not telling me you're. Oh, seriously, is your dad gonna kill you? Are you listening, Papa? Papa. He's her father, her estranged father, who she told me she hadn't seen in seven years. And on the other world line, I suppose she hadn't. Carissa did say that her father was a physicist. Nakabashi cert certainly is a physicist, though the scientific community as large has rejected his research. But wait, does this mean that Nakabashi killed his own daughter? Or was it someone else? Someone who has yet to appear? There's no way to know. If I could be sure that Nakabashi was the killer, then I would intervene right now. But I'm not. I better keep watching. See what happens. What is that? I heard you were giving a presentation on time travel. So I thought about it too. Could it be possible to make a time machine? Carissa wrote a paper on time travel? When she spoke at ATF, she rejected the very idea of time travel. Although, come to think of it, she was awfully interested in the phone wave. Damn, I forgot how much of a Sundere she was. I'd like your opinion, Papa. We can polish it together, then submit it to the scientific community. I don't know if they'll listen, but just in case, I do have acquaintances at Science Magazine. So, do you give him an idea, which he then kills you for, and so in the future post series about that starts World War III, so does Carizu start World War III? I don't see why she has to die, though. Akabashi takes out the document and starts reading it with a disgusted frown. Dots. So that's what it was. She didn't have anything dangerous in that envelope, like drugs or a gun. It was just some document. But that raises a new question. Could that be the Nakabashi paper? According to Sasua, that document sparked the time travel arms race that ultimately led to World War III and the deaths of 5.7 billion people. It started with a race between the EU and Russia, then America got involved and things really went to hell. Is that why Carissa's safety is so important to changing divergence? I get it now. Nothing is coincidence. Everything is inevitable. Nakabashi flips restlessly through the document. He's not even trying to hide his irritation. Did I ask you to write this? Well, no, but... You invited me to come, remember? It was the first time we'd talked in seven years. That's what got me thinking. And as I worked on the thesis, I started to realize it might actually be possible to build a time machine. If the thesis is published, you could have your revenge on the scientific community for shunning you- I wasn't shunned! Nakabashi suddenly shrieks to Kurisu, causing her to shrink back in fear. Those incompetent bastards were just jealous of my superiority. I was the one who gave up on them. Please don't yell. Nakabashi gives his daughter a disdainful snort and goes back to flipping through the paper. You read really fast, Papa. Just like I remember. Nakabashi even ignored Carissa's words of endearment. Oh, he's actually reading? I thought it was just flipping through and didn't really care too much. Not bad. You think so? We can submit it jointly if you like. I don't mind. No, don't do anything. I'll take care of it. What do you mean, he wants to glory? What do I mean? I mean, I don't think you're special just because... I mean, don't think you're special just because your plebeian thesis published in some magazine. Dots. What? Is that how you look at your father? I'm sorry. An awkward silence follows. I feel no warmth between these two. The only thing I feel is distance. Yeah, but not enough reason to kill. 
Carissa in particular seems desperate to avoid upsetting her father. This must be when we were searching for Mayuri. Um, we haven't seen each other in a while. There's a lot I want to talk about. You're living in Aomori now, right? Carissa is trying to maintain a cheerful tone, but I can see that her expression is stiff. I remember how she said she had trouble dealing with her father. I think my father hates me. She looked so lonely when she spoke those words. Quit. Leave! Eh? Go back to America. Never show me your face to me again. But... You want my opinion? We'll submit it jointly? You don't mean any of that. I know how you think. He sounds like a child with an inferiority complex. Is this pity? How dare you! You're supposed to be my daughter! I... Don't understand. Please calm. I am calm. Don't tell me what to do. This is bad. It's almost time for Kurisu's murder. Intervene. Was it really Nakabashi, her own father, who killed her? I'll tell you why I called you here today. I wanted to show you my research. Research beyond even what you can imagine. I wanted to prove once and for all that you are nothing compared to me. But that brat in the lab coat ruined everything. I know you were laughing at me too, don't you deny it? How dare you treat your own father this way? I wasn't... You want my opinion on this thesis? Fine. I'll give it to you. Nakabashi rolls right over Carissa's objections. It's like he doesn't even hear her voice. I'm going to publish it myself. End of discussion. I wonder if this makes them fight. Yep, that paper starts World War III. That's... You're... Stealing it, Papa? What did you say? You're stealing my work? I didn't think even you would do something like... Ah! Nakabashi suddenly whirls and strikes Kurisu across the face. What do I do? You intervene! He's the killer! I know I should do something, but what? Who do you think you're talking to? You could surprise him from behind. Nakabashi throws the paper aside and seizes his daughter by the throat. He goes full Homer Simpson here. Kurisu gasps for air. Her face twists in pain and his, as his grip tightens. This is not how she dies, though. You can't possibly understand how I feel. Why did you have to be so talented? I detest you. I hate your very existence. Nobody's allowed to be better than me. Understand? Nobody. Especially not my own daughter. That's why I sent you away. Couldn't bear the shame of being your father. It's all your fault. It's all your fault! This is completely absurd. He's blaming her for his own failures. I've seen enough. He's the killer for sure. Now I'm not so sure. If he really wanted to kill her, he would stab her, but he doesn't have any sort of knife. And besides, all of her blood was inside that room. They, they're in the hallway now. I burst from my hiding spots. Stop! I ram him with my shoulder as hard as I can, knocking him away from Kurisu. Kurisu gasped for breath. Who the hell are you? I won't let you kill Kurisu. I'm going to save Kurisu. I'm going to save her and change the future. Even a weakling like me can pin down an old man like Nakabashi. And I can get Susua to call the police and... The memory of Kurisu's body flashes through my mind. No, he won't turn out like that. Steadying himself with one hand against the wall, Nakabashi gets to his feet and looks straight at me. The instant our eyes meet, his face twists in rage. You! You're the brat who ruined my presentation! His presentation? Right, of course, I call him out on his lies in the middle of his presentation. Nakabashi is mistaking me for my past self. Understandable, since we look exactly the same. How dare you show your face before me? Why does everyone get in my way? I know. You and Kurisu planned this, didn't you? Didn't you? He's delusional. You brats won't get away with this. Nakabashi glares at me with bloodshot eyes, then takes something out of his pocket. At first, I can't tell what it is. But then I see a glint in a dim light. That's a knife. A knife. The blade is about 20 centimeters long. But can we really change convergence? 
I can't help but shiver at its cold shine. Why is he even carrying something like that? Is he completely insane? Wait, is that the weapon that killed Kurisu? I won't let that happen. Damn. Why is my brain so fixated on that scene? He'll pay for mocking me! <gasps> Nakabashi charges like an enraged bull with no sign of hesitation whatsoever. He raises his knife high. I instinctively dodge back. The knife misses me by a hair. He gathers himself for another strike. The sight of his face twisted in madness and rage fills me with terror. I want to scream. He's going to kill me! No, don't be afraid. I can't die here. The pass is already decided. But wait, if the pass is already decided, then doesn't that mean I can't save Kurisu? I shake off the thoughts. Just think about saving her. Apologize! Yeah. Swallowing my fear, I force myself to stop running away. Instead, I lunge forward. I knock Nakabashi's hand aside. The knife falls from his grip and clatters to the floor. I leap on it and pick it up. I wonder if we end up killing Kurisu somehow in a brawl. That was easier said than expected. That was not the sentence, by the way. Stop it, Papa! Don't tell me what to do! I look up in surprise. Nakabashi has taken a screwdriver from a toolbox left in the passage. Kurisu is walking towards him, pleading with him to stop. She's completely defenseless. No, Kurisu! Stay away from him! You're the one in danger, not me! Just when I thought I disarmed him, he finds something else. Even a screwdriver can kill it with enough force behind it. Run, Kurisu! Kurisu glances at me, but she doesn't move. Why won't she run away? This is crazy, Papa. Please stop. What do you know? What do you know? Nakabashi has completely lost his mind. Nothing she can say will reach him. If only you'd never been born! Nakabashi turns to Kurisu, brandishing his screwdriver. But Kurisu still doesn't run away. Gah! Blood spurts from the arm Kurisu used to guard her face. She's going to die. I have to do something. I grip the knife firmly in my hands. Kurisu won't die if I kill Nakabashi first. And I mean, he's the guy who will start World War III. That image again. Stop getting in my way. I won't be tied to that past. I need to do this. To change the future. To save Kurisu. Nakabashi! As Nakabashi raises his arm for another blow, I thrust my knife at his unprotected back. No! Yep. Figure that could happen. Through the knife, my hand feels resistance. The sensation of tearing through flesh, scraping bone. It's surprisingly tough. But at the same time, I feel the flesh pulsating. It shifts in time with my victim's breath. We know who the victim is. I... stabbed... I stabbed... Why? I can't believe my eyes. What happened? I tried to stab Nagabashi. The blade should have pierced his back. And yet... At the last minute, Kurisu forced herself between us, as if... as if to protect Nakabashi. Why? Strength drains from Kurisu's body. She slumps against me, her head on my shoulder. <laughs> A fitting end for you fools. <laughs> that motherfucker! Laughing maniacally, Nakabashi picks up the dropped thesis and runs to the elevator at the far end of the hall. Not only did you laugh at your own daughter dying, you're going to start World War III and kill 5.7 billion people! What the hell, man? I can't chase him. I know what's going to happen if I don't stop him, but I can't take a single step. Is this the joke? Is this the punchline? I wanted to know who killed Kurisu. And now, I am 
Sorry. Carissa speaks. Her voice is barely a whisper. I feel something wet on my hands. Wet and warm. Blood. Carissa's blood. Gushing from her wound. It's warm, but not hot. And yet, it feels like it's burning my hands. I try to pull the knife out. If I can stop the bleeding, maybe she'll be okay. But my hands won't move. It's like they turn to stone. My arms. My fingers. No matter how hard I try, they won't move an inch. <sighs> Carissa's breathing quickly grows labored. She's suffering. I didn't mean for this to happen. This isn't what I wanted. Why won't my hands move? I want to pull out the knife. I want to ease her pain. Why won't my body obey me? It's as if someone else is in control. Carissa's body convulses against mine. The pain must be unbearable. Is there nothing I can do to help her? I want to cry. Why? The only thing I can do is ask. Because he's still my father. I just wanted him to accept me. I studied so hard, hoping he would praise me. But now, I finally understand. Papa didn't want to accept me. I'm such an idiot. Why did I save him? I wonder. I'm sorry for getting you involved. Oh, it hurts. Am I going to die? I don't want to die. I don't want it to end like this. Her voice is fading fast. Don't die. Please don't die on me. But uh, my prayers are in vain. Help me. Help. Her body suddenly grows heavy. I can no longer hear the sound of her breathing. And yet, the blood from her wound is still warm. I killed her. I killed her. The one who killed Kurisu was me. <laughs> As I scream, another me looks down from above. As he hears the sound of my despair, the last piece of the puzzle clicks into place. The scream I heard that day was my own.